Hello, folks. Welcome again to the All Good Things Star Trek podcast special video log vlog entry on Discovery Cannon Eggs. Discovery is back again from its winter hiatus. We had our first new episode a couple of days ago, episode number 10, Despite Yourself. It's a big time episode. Lots of uh, amazing things happen in there. We're going to break down the cannon eggs, those little things that uh, refer to other pieces of Star Trek um, in an episode of Discovery and uh, those things that go, you know, I've heard of that before. I'm going to explain them all to you right now. We're going to start right off. Uh, Captain Lorca mentions Organia uh, right near the top of the episode, right after they transfer into the Mirror Universe. And we'll talk a lot more about the Mirror Universe in a few minutes. But Organia, of course, is from TOS, Aaron of Mercy, the first episode where we meet the Klingons. The Organians, of course, were the matter uh, and non-matter, non-corporeal beings, godlike, pow- you know, the, the rest. Uh, anyway, Organia is a big place in uh, TOS and moving forward. Um, so there is a mention there. If you've ever heard that, that's what it's from. Um, one thing I noticed that was interesting, and this is, may have been in the rest of the series, and I just hadn't noticed it. On the Discovery, there's a red alert signal. Red alert. Red alert. Red alert. Um, that it shows up on various displays, on the view screens, that sort of thing. And it is identical to the red alert symbol that is in the Star Trek, the motion picture, uh, Wrath of Khan, the movie uh, era, Interpro- um, TOS movies. Um, it's similar to that. Of course, it wasn't in TOS itself. It was only added when the movies came out. But it is a um, sort of a callback to those graphics from that area, the red alert signal. Um, okay, so the Mirror Universe... We've, uh, of course, we have traveled over into the Mirror Universe. Mirror Mirror was the first episode uh, from TOS. Uh, of course, Goateed Spock, all that. Everyone knows that. Um, they visited the, uh, and of course, the Tholian Web uh, uh, figures into the mix, too, uh, from TOS um, with the USS Defiant. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. There were uh, f- a total of five episodes of Deep Space Nine that uh, featured the Mirror Universe, uh, beginning with uh, Crossover, uh, Through the Looking Glass, Shattered Mirror, Resurrection, and The Emperor's New Cloak. Those all had to do with the Mirror Universe. Now, of course, in Enterprise, the uh, two-parter, very last, uh, right before the finale of Enterprise, we had In a Mirror, Darkly, Part 1 and 2, which featured the aforementioned uh, Defiant from Tholian Webb. Um, Archer and Hoshi and all of those folks went. Uh, we saw their mirror universe counterparts dealing with the uh, USS Defiant, and um, a couple of interesting things uh, about the mirror universe that we've seen so far. Now there are obviously several stylistic differences between the Discovery set and costumes and all those kind of things that uh, uh, between there and what we see in TOS. And just the same, there are differences in the costumes, the logo, those sort of things between uh, what we are recognized and used to seeing for the Mirror Universe. Whether that is, there's a reason for that. If that plays out later, um, who knows? Uh, there were no, the logo with the earth and the, and the sword coming through it. We see that in a couple of different forms, but we didn't see it painted on the, on the uh, turbolift doors like we do in, the, uh, in Mirror Mirror. Again, just small differences here and there, but if you missed it, it wasn't there. But they do have it on the uh, the floor of the the deck of the bridge there on the uh, Discovery, or so that they painted there. So uh, anyway, there's a couple of things, and of course, it is still called the Terran Empire. Uh, they didn't, I don't believe they called it that in Mirror Mirror, although I may be mistaken, but they definitely called it that in Deep Space Nine. So you have some callbacks to the Terran Empire. Um, we saw Stamets's, uh, Stamets uh, laying in sick bay, delirious and all that, and his eyes were fogged over. And, and I kept wondering, is there going to be any kind of a callback or any kind of a reference to Gary Mitchell from Where, Where No Man Has Gone Before, early TOS, the second pilot? Um, I don't believe there is. Um, he, he did throw uh, the doctor ac- across sick bay at one point. Um, but, uh, I don't think there was anything mental. There wasn't any telepathy or t- telekinesis or anything about that. So I don't think we're going to be seeing any kind of, uh, godlike powers of that sort from, from, uh, from Stamets. Although 
I'm, it's my personal opinion, uh, I believe the doctor, uh, poor doctor, I've forgotten his name, uh, uh, is not dead. I'm, I'm betting Stamets has a way to bring him back to life using whatever <clears throat> uh, spore power that he is tuned into. We'll wait and see. That has nothing to do with canned eggs, just my speculation. Um, we saw a worker bee, um, of course, instant, or, um, uh, Lieutenant Tyler took a worker bee over to the Klingon ship wreckage try to extract that data core and uh, we've seen worker bees before a couple of times but it is a, again a reference to Star Trek the motion picture you saw those little those little worker bees flying all over the Enterprise before they left space dock um, and there's actually blueprints for those in uh, some of the Star Trek the motion picture blueprint series um, in Isaac for your thoughts uh, Michael Burnham mentions that to Tyler, and Isik is actually a unit of currency, and it was used in an episode of Deep Space Nine, Rivals, uh, the one where the Elorian visits the station and and uh, sets up shop and hilarity ensues. But anyway, Isik was used by a, a, a race called the Vlugtons. I'm reading it. I haven't watched the episode. I don't remember how it's pronounced. Uh, but anyway, that is that is a unit of currency, and somehow that unit of currency, the Isik, uh, became recognized by the Vulcans and, and evolved into a saying. So there you go. Um, <laughs> we saw Captain Lorca uh, disguise his voice uh, to pretend he was the engineer on board the ISS Discovery. Uh, he took on a Scottish accent. I'm sure that everyone knows that he is uh, channeling uh, another Scottish engineer in Starfleet at, uh, in Discovery's time. Um, of course, this is 10, 12, 10 years or so before TOS. Um, Scotty was an in, the uh, chief engineer of the Enterprise, I believe, in, um, in Where No Man Has Gone Before. So um, it's a very good chance that if he's not on board the Enterprise yet, here in this 10 years prior time period, this is still Pike and, and Spock are on the Enterprise right now, He's surely an engineer somewhere else in Starfleet, obviously, so it's a pretty good bet that Lorca knows him, and uh, because he has a distinctive voice, he was able to uh, have the idea, well, I'll just pretend I'm Scottish if I have to disguise my voice. So we have a, a sort of a callback to Scotty there. Um, of course, we have the USS Defiant, like I mentioned before. They are from originally from the Tholian web and uh, went into an interphase area in Tholian space. It turns out eventually it traveled through into the Mirror Universe, uh, into the Enterprise series, showed up there, they commandeered it, and eventually I believe it made its way back. Um, and anyway, that's where the Defiant, that Defiant is from, from TOS and Enterprise. Of course, we know the USS Defiant is uh, another ship entirely on Deep Space Nine. Um, different ship, same name. They mentioned a really interesting thing called the Manchurian test, and it's apparently a test to determine uh, a psychological test uh, of some sort, whether it's a psychological, an actual evaluation, or if there's some sort of medication or scans or whatever involved, they don't elaborate, but it is to determine whether a person has been what they call brainwashed. Now, obviously, the Manchurian test is taken from The Manchurian Candidate, which was a novel uh, written in 1959 by Richard Condon. Um, was made into two different movies in 1962 and 2004. Um, of course, it was about an American... I don't, I've never read it, never seen the movies, but from what I understand, it's about an American uh, who was brainwashed by the Soviets and uh, planted in the American society to spy and to cause all kinds of havoc. Well, that's what they, they've taken the name for this test that they were able to do on people uh, to determine whether they had been brainwashed or had a personality imprinted upon theirs, uh, and they call it a Manchurian test. So um, and there was another um, Manchurian candidate connection to Star Trek. Uh, you may remember in the fourth season of Next Generation, there was an epi episode called The Mind's Eye where Geordi was um, kidnapped by Romulans and uh, given that same treatment, he was actually brainwashed and became an agent for the Romulans. And uh, that episode, The Mind's Eye, was uh, seen at the time, was acknowledged to be a uh, sort of an adaptation or uh, used the Manchurian Candidate as an inspiration for that episode. Um, <laughs> a couple more things really quick. Uh, we've got, like I said, we've got a lot of Mirror Universe. That's the big cannon egg going right now. It's sort of uh, overshadowing everything else. We had two other things in the episode that I found. One was when when uh, Captain Burnham 
comes back onto the bridge of the Discovery. Oh, excuse me, of the Shenzo, of the Shenzo, and uh, she has killed her her uh, her former the former captain of that ship, and uh, she steps onto the bridge, and the all the officers on the ship give her the slow clap, and everyone loves the slow clap, and it's so eighties. Uh, just love the reference to uh, it's not really a reference to the eighties, but it's a it's a kind of a an interesting cheesy thing. But that itself, I believe, was a reference to. Um, or, or at least there's a, a similar uh, uh, television show out there these days, and I'm sure that some of you know uh, very well a series called Black Mirror, and it's on uh, Netflix right now. And uh, this, uh, the fourth season has just started, and, and it's uh, the very first episode is an episode called USS Callister. And if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. It's a takeoff on... Uh, it's hard to describe... Uh, not going too far into it, but there is a ship that's very similar to the TOS Enterprise that this uh, computer uh, uh, programmer has created for himself um, in a virtual reality type world. Um, in this world, he fancies himself as the Kirk type character, totally in charge of the entire crew. It looks like it's just an episode of TOS, as cheesy as all get out, but then they start, the crew starts reacting to him as if they were mirror universe type of people and, and licking his boots and singing his praises and clapping the captain and all that. So it's very similar in a lot of ways to the mirror universe. So Black Mirror is the name of the series. Um, I haven't watched very much of it. I'm looking forward to getting into it. But the first episode of the fourth season, USS Callister, take a look. That's it. Um, again, so my name's Barry. If I didn't say it before, with the All Good Things, I'm a co-host from that show. Uh, you can get in touch with us at allgoodthings.podbean.com. That's where the website is. Um, all um, agtpod at gmail.com, agtpod uh, on Twitter and Facebook as well. Send me a message. Let me know how you like it. Let me know if you have any other canon eggs. And until then, next time, live long and prosper.